Hey guys, how y'all doing? Welcome to my channel, Anton503. Some of you guys already know me as EJ or V7 Beats from my other music channel, but this one right here, we're gonna be exclusively talking about that startup life, software engineering, data science, day-to-day -day hacks, career moves, virtually anything that there is interesting in, in the tech space. And today I'm gonna be talking about what every aspiring data scientist needs to know before entering the industry. Now I know a lot of schools are offering courses in data science, uh, a lot of people are entering this industry from various technical and non-technical backgrounds, uh, and it's great. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of people don't set their expectations right, often get disappointed with certain things, often don't really understand what the role of a data scientist entails. That's pretty much what I'm here to talk about today based on my own experience and experiences of a lot of data scientists that I've worked uh, collaboratively over the years. Number one, you'll be writing way less code. Now, I think this one applies more to people who came from a software engineering background. Uh, personally, I was one of them. It kind of uh, caught me off guard right off the top. It's one of those things that's pretty obvious, a lot of data science work happens in Python, R, and these languages have a lot of uh, libraries and every line you write are pretty loaded. And you probably already experienced this if you come from a software engineering background uh, and you've worked with frameworks like Flask, Django, or anything in Python. Uh, even 10 lines of code can do a lot of damage. Uh, but that especially starts to get shorter when you get in the data science space because one line of code, bam, you got the heat map that shows the correlations of uh, various data points. One line of code, bam, you've trained a model using k-means clustering or you know one of the out-of-box uh, out mo uh, models. There were days when I would just write 10 lines or 15 lines of code. For a software engineer, it's, it takes a while to get used to it because you're used to putting on your headphones writing 200, 500, I don't know the average lines of code that a software engineer writes and uh, just getting used to writing 10 lines and just optimizing that over and over, uh, that takes a while getting used to. Number two, not every project has a machine learning component. This one I really want to emphasize because a lot of people I think who get in this space assume they're going to be doing machine learning all the time starting day one. And that is not always true. There are a few reasons for that. Uh, the first one being there's much more to data science than just machine learning. Let's just start with you get access to the data that's maybe slightly cleansed and and uh, transformed. You have to start with understanding the relationship between different features. You have to get it ready to first feed it into a machine learning or an analytical process. And then eventually you get to the part of doing the analysis. And there you can't always use machine learning. That's one of the reasons you won't always do machine learning. Because um, businesses sometimes want to understand how you got to a certain conclusion. You can't just say, hey, uh, you need to sell these two businesses. And when they ask why, you can't say, I fed it into this machine learning model and it said we should sell this business. That's not really how it works. They want to know what specific steps that you took to get to that conclusion. In which case, you have to take the analytical route. You can't feed it into a machine learning black box. Because at least in its current state, machine learning models don't really explain how they got to a particular conclusion. Now, the other reason for that is unless you're within the research and development realm and your job is literally inventing the next generation machine learning algorithm, uh, you'll be fine with using what's already out there. You literally have to get your data ready to get to that stage, which is 80% of your job. And the next 10% is just feeding and optimizing uh, the out-of-the-box algorithm and spitting out outputs. Number three. Business skills and soft skills are way more important than you would think. This one specially applies for data scientists who are business oriented. I mean, who go in and solve business challenges. People come in from other engineering backgrounds or other technical backgrounds. Uh, we're used to getting requirements and just building as per the requirements. But here, one of the tasks of a data scientist is understanding what you have to solve in the first place. A lot of times, problem statements are not very clear. Businesses want to solve a particular problem, but don't really know how. And also, sometimes they don't even know what they want to solve. Everyone wants to get in on the data game, on the machine learning game, and they bring in a team of data scientists. They give you a generally a very vague statement of what needs to get solved. And it's up to you to kind of narrow that down and really understand the pain points and recommend a solution. In that particular area, I've noticed, of course, soft skills, and uh, your business skills come in really handy. In a way, it's like you're a therapist for the businesses and you're on a therapy session trying to understand what their problems are. Number four, people mistake you for a data engineer or a machine learning engineer. This one holds true because 
the field of data science is still fairly new. The role of a data scientist is still fairly new and kind of varies between different companies. Normally, people would assume you're the data god. You know everything right from the point of extracting that data to getting your uh, models ready for production. And that's not always true. Um, you probably already experienced this if you're in software engineering. If you're a front-end developer, people ask you, why can't you build the API server? Uh, if, you're a, if you're a physician and you, know, you specialize in an area, people just assume, why can't you solve my heart problem? It's, it's the same thing, right? Some data scientists, of course, are well-versed and they, they have done a little bit of data engineering. They are uh, comfortable productionizing what they've built. But that's not always the case. Yeah, it, it gets tricky sometimes when you have to explain, hey, I'm a data scientist, not a data engineer, and people ask, what's the difference? If you're joining a new company, you want to understand how big their data science team is. You want to understand what their understanding is of a, of a data science role. Number five, PhD is not an absolute requirement unless you're within the research and development realm. And like I said earlier, you're inventing the next generation algorithm and that's pretty much what you're focused in. Most of the times, uh, data scientists are solving business problems. You're going in, if you're a consultant, you're going in, working on a project for six months, solving a business challenge, and you're off to the next project. If you're an in-house data scientist, you're moving from projects to projects, solving different challenges within your company. And in such situations, you'd be perfectly fine using the tools and resources that are already out there. You don't have to invent something from scratch. And you might not even have the resources to do that in the first place. In such cases, your ability to pick up new tools and resources as they come out is much more important than you having a PhD. And I know plenty of data scientists, most of the data scientists that I know and I've worked with, and these are within Fortune 500 companies, have a master's. I know plenty of them who just have a bachelor's degree and are still great at their job just because they specialize in other areas, which is understanding the pain points of the business, uh, driving the right insights that's going to help the business. Is It's an overlap. It's an overlap of uh, programming, computer science concepts, machine learning, uh, statistics, and business. And if you want to be the ideal data scientist, you would have some skills in all of these areas. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe because I plan to upload a new video every week or two. What do you guys want me to talk about in the future? Please write about that in the comment section. And also, if you're a data scientist and you've experienced things that I did not talk about in this video, feel free to write about it in the comment section. I'll see you guys next time. Girl, can't